The Winnipeg Jets could do anything this season, whether it's standing pat at the trade deadline, making a depth acquisition, or cashing the chips in and going all in. What should the Jets do? Well, you know my opinion, but we'll dive into why going all in could be the best it's ever been on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. I am your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making us your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasts and platforms and YouTube. Subscribing is always free and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over 50 different kinds of infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Now, like I said at the top of the episode, the Jets have legit options right now. Um, And obviously for the Jets, uh, this is a season where Winnipeg has you know, a a real crossroads to figure out. And I say a crossroads because the Jets have put themselves in one of the best positions possible, a position where they can add, do nothing, or maybe add a little piece, right? Maybe they kind of scale it back like they did last year, where they add a more uh, rotational addition in guys like Nemesnikov and Niederreiter. Now, obviously, Niederreiter has panned out uh, really well and did basically as soon as he came in. Uh, Vladislav uh, really has become an instrumental part of this team this season after having a, a solid start last year, but really elevating his game this year. And so you might argue that they're perhaps better than depth acquisitions. But overall, right, you know, you're not really swinging for the fences with a Giroud type, a Tarasenko type, one of those guys. So the Jets might be looking to to go all in this year. That could be a legitimate option. And I think this year presents the best opportunity for going all in that the Jets have had maybe ever. I think the last time the door was this wide open to something like that was probably, you know, in, in 2018, right? When the Jets were the juggernaut and they surprised us with the Stasny trade. I think at the time they were trying to go for, who was it, like Derek Broussard? And, uh, of course, the Knights tried to, you know, thieve Broussard out from under us. And actually, that set up an even better trade that might not have happened if the Jets had gotten Derek instead. So, you know, Winnipeg is in a unique position of being at the top of the league. They're at the top of the division. And they, quite frankly, could do anything. And I think because the field of NHL, uh, like Stanley Cup contenders this year, isn't really that determined and and firm i feel like this makes the jets kind of the best of the lot right like the jets have elite goaltending they've got elite defense they've got an offense that can do enough to back up both and i feel like the jets could potentially uh become an unstoppable juggernaut if they really do go for a a major acquisition now there are a couple of ways that they could do this one guy that i'm very interested in is Jakob Chikrin maybe on the back end. As a top four defender who could potentially uh, boost Winnipeg's right side by a lot, he would be a fascinating two-year rental. I don't know if he would want to extend, but as like a two-year option, which would sort of fit with Winnipeg's competitive timeline with the current core, you know, it would give the Jets uh, a lot of right-sided flexibility. You know, uh, uh, it would give them what, you know, you have DeMello, uh, Pionk, and Chikrin. And Chikrin could probably anchor your second pair, push Pionk down to the third pair, which I think would make a lot of sense. Uh, and it, it would just be pretty awesome. Now, it does mean that somebody probably has to get moved out. My guess would be Nate Schmidt, probably. But, you know, I don't quite know how they would make all of that work. But, 
on the offensive side, the Jets could also swing really big and try to bring in maybe a top six center or a top six winger. I think the winger might be the easier thing to do. And, you know, the Jets could probably convert, you know, Perfetti back to center or something, maybe have Velarde play down the middle. I don't really like Velarde as a center, to be honest. I feel like he's just played a lot more effectively as a winger. And when he actually grinds out wide and uh, feeds sort of uh, the interior position, maybe to like a Shifley or something, it just clicks a lot better than having him be a little more of the uh, distributor in the middle, right? He's not bad there, but I feel like he's just so much better as a wing. And given how he's played so far, I'm not really inclined to change that. So for the Jets, right, you look at the field of competitors and who really scares you. It's kind of like maybe Colorado when they get healthy, maybe the Panthers. And that's kind of it. You, you look at other teams, you know, the Jets could probably take on Dallas, uh, Vegas, if they make it. You know, they're, they're probably going to be pretty banged up. You know, Eichel is now week to week. Stone could be week to week. Uh, Canucks might be a little bit of a scary team just because their whole roster seems to be shooting like 50%. I don't know what's going on with every single player on that team. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. But I feel like at some point that will slow down. So the Jets could probably take on Vancouver in a seven-game series. Um, the Kings, you know, they have struggled recently too, and the Jets have beaten them before already, so I'm not as worried. The team that might be the sleeper scary one is Edmonton because the Oilers, you know, as long as they get some saves, they are a really, really tough opponent, and they have been lighting their opponents up recently, including Toronto just the other night. So Winnipeg, you know, they're, they're in a great position, but like I always say, you know, if you're trying to mitigate variance and reduce the randomness for an inherently random sport, you got to give yourself as many options to, to go far as you can. I think sometimes fans tend to take things a little for granted that the Jets will be back in this position next year, but we saw how that didn't really happen after 1718. You know, every season that you are this good, you really have to take advantage of and be prepared to go all in, especially when the conditions are right and the conditions this season are probably the most favorable they've ever been the conditions were pretty decent because the jets could have like a team of and legitimately have a shot at, at squeaking through and maybe making a deeper run but this year the jets are built to go deep and i feel like they can make themselves almost unstoppable and with time to spare to figure out the chemistry stuff at the end of the season if they make a big acquisition either right before or at the trade deadline so a lot of options for the jets I think it would be great if they swung big. I know a lot of people are not really as enthused about that. I've seen all sorts of comments about not breaking, you know, the, the chemistry and lines up and, uh, you know, don't fix what isn't broke. But I promise you, you actually do need to do this kind of stuff. Winnipeg, you know, is going to have injuries. They're going to have guys who maybe have a bit of a dry spell. And you want to give yourself insurance, the kind of insurance that, you know, it really only comes with making a big, big trade. Now, Speaking of insurance, I did want to talk about our friends and partners at Jace Medical who are offering an insurance of their own, perhaps not scoring depth, but something in case of emergency. I know that we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but can we just talk a minute for about preparing for like real life stuff? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst uh, you know, respiratory illness outbreaks that we've seen in a long time. For a lot of us, it's pretty scary. I know I've actually had some really bad respiratory stuff. It took me several weeks to get rid of it, even with antibiotics. So, you know, I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if one of my family members or friends had a really bad infection and I could not get uh, the antibiotics that they needed. You know, this is a, it is a common problem, actually. I think a lot of us have come across it, especially recently. Logistics are not great. And, you know, you want something that's assured and guaranteed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because Jace Medical has our back. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial infections, UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, and so much more. This is stuff that could happen to any of us and probably has happened at least once this year. So if you're ready to give yourself the kind of insurance that you can't really get with uh, maybe a scoring player trade, visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician's encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your med medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. 
Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are walking through Winnipeg season thus far, a couple of fun discussions, you know, should the Jets go all in, all that fun stuff. But amidst all of this, there are some less fun conversations about players who perhaps have struggled a little bit, uh, maybe guys who are fighting for minutes and frankly need to show us more to cement their place in the lineup. And some of these names that we're going to talk about, I'm sure are going to irritate you. You might even hate me after this. Probably not. Uh, I think these are guys that universally have started getting some uh, attention for perhaps maybe not contributing as much as expected. Before we dive into who these players are and why they might be on the outside looking in shortly for lineup changes, I do want to shout out something really cool the Locked On Network is doing. We have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts and our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked on Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, swinging right back around to the Jets, obviously, uh, there are a fight for minutes in the bottom six this year. I think it's been very apparent, uh, you know, even with injuries, that the Jets have a good problem. They've got a lot of depth guys who can contribute meaningfully and actually do so at a really high level, perhaps more than some of their peers. And I think that's been the case with a couple of players in particular. One guy who I've, I've kind of been a little mixed on this year is Mason Appleton, because Appleton opened the first quarter of the season really strong. And then the second quarter up until around now has been, uh, well, it's been rough, if we're being honest. He hadn't scored in like 26 games until his goal against the Islanders. And more than that, you know, you just saw him uh, perhaps struggling to generate offense alongside his line mates. He was grinding in the corners. He's doing a lot of the normal stuff. But one thing that made Mason really effective was attacking the slot area. You know, he was fearless, mixing it up down low in the crease. He cleaned up a lot of second chance opportunities. And nowadays he doesn't really do that. And I feel like that change to his game has very much limited his effectiveness because you know, in terms of like transition game, high end uh, attacking instincts and positioning towards a perimeter, you know, you don't really see um, him be as effective in that sort of role. He has to be a guy who is attacking the crease, who's grinding down low, and who's attacking the spots uh, that are right where the goalie is. I feel like if you ask him to be a more perimeter player, it limits his offensive utility. And so the Jets kind of need to find a better role for him because I feel like the third line isn't really clicking as much as it used to. Um, and now that Lowry has had to be promoted further up the lineup, you've really seen that unit take a nosedive. Kupari did his best to anchor that line, did not go well. Taninato tried the same, did not go well. So I, I think you just need to see more from Mason, especially if the Jets were to make a trade, because while Mason does have around a half a point per game, you know, the Jets are going to have less roster spots to work with. And I think Mason's, you know, cap hit and the, the fact that he could potentially be a valuable trade asset might mean he gets swapped if he were to bring in a bigger winger, like, say, a Buchnevich or something. And I'm not saying that that's guaranteed, but it could be a legit thing. The same thing can probably be said of Alex, Alex Ayafalo. I thought Ayafalo would fit in better than he has so far, and he's not been terrible. But one thing I've noticed with him is that, uh, for one thing, he sometimes struggles to win those second chance puck battles. He, you know, he does kind of cough it up a little bit too much for my liking. The other thing, though, that I do notice is that when it comes to like offensive drives and stuff, I feel like he has struggled to keep up with some of the uh, like top six line mates that he's had. You know, you'll see him occasionally kill offensive counters and stuff. And I feel like that was not something that I was really expecting. But because he, like, you, you see moments where he's brilliant down low, he'll have some great instincts to wrap, you know, uh, dangerous chances into, uh, you know, goalie pads and create second chance rebounds. He has had some good backhand shots, some nice wrist shots. He picks pretty good spots to take his shots. It just feels like there are other moments where he'll be leading a rush and he coughs the puck up, turns it over, and it turns into a counter against. So I feel like I follow, you know, his, his contract. Look, it wasn't something that the Jets necessarily negotiated. He's had that deal, but I feel like for $4 million, you, you, you've got to be seeing more from him. He's not been terrible, like I said, not terrible, but he really needs to step up and elevate his game because I think 
that that message that's been sent is that he's now on the fourth line, and that's kind of where his performance thus far has sat. He's been a fourth liner for the most part. He's had a couple of shifts where he's looked competent in the top six. You know, he's had some really good moments where he's elevated his game, but you just don't see it enough to where I feel like I would say his position is locked. The same can be said for Kupari. Kupari's not really fit in all that amazingly well. You know, if I had a choice between him and David Gustafson, I'd probably choose Gustafson. I feel like Gus is more defensively responsible. I feel like he uses his strength and skill well, and he grinds along the walls and stuff in the same way that a lot of other guys do. And Kupari, for me, you know, he does get into some dangerous areas. He's had some moments where you'll see him uh, drive uh, big counters really quickly because of his speed. But then, you know, whether he's actually able to create offense out of it, uh, it's been a little bit more limited. You know, against the Islanders, he actually did a decent job. But then he'll also have moments where he coughs up the puck right in front of Hellebuck in an extremely high danger area. So that I think he has to limit because you can't really – uh, limit your own value doing that because he's not scoring a lot, right? He only has like one point in 17 games. And I know he missed a lot of time, but given that Tenonato has already had like five points in 11 games and even Gustafson who doesn't score has like four points in his 20 odd games so far, you just have to see more from these guys. I think that they're capable of elevating their games. I think we've seen them do it before, you know, and they, if they don't, I mean, it is what it is. The Jets are probably going to make a trade or two. And one of these guys will at some point either uh, get benched or perhaps traded. So something to keep an eye on. But speaking of trades, obviously the Jets might be shopping. And I wanted to update on what Winnipeg might be looking for in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. It's to match. And, you know, you don't have to search because you can match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. They have a great hiring and matching platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed's data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work and use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. Uh, you know, and if this is the kind of stuff that you're looking for, you know, I've actually used Indeed myself when I was seeking employment. I thought it was really convenient. It was very easy. As somebody who has, you know, used plenty of other websites, I thought Indeed was great, and I can only imagine that for employers looking for a really convenient service that's fast, accurate, and gives you high-quality applications, this really couldn't be easier. So, you know, this is the time for uh, listeners to get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed from Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions to apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are just wrapping up with some quick thoughts on what the Jets might be shopping for as Winnipeg is looking around the league. Uh, assessing their own needs and coming up with a plan of action for perhaps some big trade acquisitions. Now the Jets, every day that I've watched them, especially in their wins, I always feel like I come away thinking, oh, they need this instead. Maybe they don't need this. Maybe this has changed. And we talked about a couple of shows ago how it's been complicated to diagnose what exactly Winnipeg needs. But I think one theme that has kind of remained consistent is that the Jets could do with an upgrade down the middle. And like I said on previous episodes, the Jets' center depth is not bad necessarily, but it's not at the level of their wing depth, right? The Jets have so many skilled wingers that they can deploy, and they have some guys that could quite honestly play down the middle, but the best way to go about this is to add probably another middle six, uh, second line sort of center, right? The Jets have perhaps investigated guys like Casey Middlestadt, maybe a few others like Adam Henrique, there are legitimate options out there and perhaps guys that could even improve the power play, but I feel like the Jets are kind of thinking more in the meter rider tier of trade right now. This, for me, would be an okay acquisition so long as like the Jets are, are choosy and careful about who they bring in. 
you can't just bring in a, a you know a modest Joe Schmo for this team. It's got to be somebody with some really legit skill, somebody who can fit Bones's vision for like a really defensively responsible team and could buy in. That's kind of why like Sean Monahan really doesn't for me fit that particular mold. Uh, and and given that he'll probably not be all that cheap, I prefer somebody. You know, if you're if you're spending the assets, go and chase a bigger fish. Now, on the back end, you know, the Jets have been discussed as perhaps looking at a more depth defender. But I feel like for me, the Jets have that already, right? You've got Heinola, you've got Schmidt, you've got all of these guys vying for like the number five or six spot. And the Jets only have a limited number of roster spots to hand out. So unless they make a big trade, I feel like right now on the defensive side of things, they don't really need to tweak a lot. I do think that Heinola over Schmidt or something might make sense to help increase Winnipeg's puck moving ability, but Schmidt has been good enough defensively and also moving the puck that you, you really don't have to go uh, and make that move immediately. It might be a longer term option for Winnipeg, especially as Heinola continues to rehab and get back into game shape. He's already looked pretty smooth with the moose so far. He's made some great passes and looks pretty close to doing what he did with the Jets a couple of months ago, but obviously you don't want to rush it. So in the meantime, Schmidt has held down the fort beautifully, but if the Jets were to maybe think about tweaking the, the back end and going for a much bigger fish, guys like Sean Walker, uh, Jakob Chukrin, maybe even Shane Gostas Bear, these are some names that either fans have suggested or the Jets themselves have been linked to. And I think Winnipeg would be perhaps wise to make one of these moves, especially if they can make that swap and perhaps move Pionk down further in the lineup. I love Neil, and he's had a much better season this year than previous years, but it's obvious that the Jets could still stand to improve the right side depth, especially if they can find somebody who's defensively responsible, because on the right side, the Jets don't really have a replacement for like Dylan DeMello. If DeMello gets hurt, the Jets are kind of up the creek without a paddle. Uh, they've tried Morrissey and Pionk together. That pairing I would probably not want to rely on being good. It might be fine against weaker teams, but against stronger rosters, perhaps not the pairing that you want to roll out there for like 30 minutes a night. So Winnipeg, for me, if they do chase a big blue liner, especially a guy who might be on like a two-year term, I wouldn't mind that. I could see it being a, a good play if they can make the money work. Um, for me, again, I would probably still prioritize adding scoring depth because, like I said, I think the Jets' blue line is functional as is and has been generally pretty good. Uh, so long as Schmidt keeps it up, I think it's fine. If if he does start to slow down and it's clear that you know the minutes are catching up to him, then you might want to make a change. But I think a lot of the value for Winnipeg would be um, – best derived from it adding attacking prowess. And it seems like the Jets are more interested in adding a forward anyways. I, I keep seeing them being linked and discussed as uh, landing spots for a lot of the bigger trade deadline centers and wingers. That for me makes the most sense. They've already been linked to Matthew Joseph, uh, you know, to, to Elias Lindholm. Players of that caliber, I think, would be solid upgrades. I've already talked about Lindholm perhaps not being the guy that I'm as into, but if it happens, it happens. I'm not going to complain about it. I mean, how could I possibly complain about adding one of the bigger uh, deadline rentals? Obviously, you know me. I will still grouse about certain things compared to trading for perhaps other players, but I still think Winnipeg can come away with a big win no matter what they do at this trade deadline. They just have to play their cards right and make sure that when they make the acquisition that they're getting the best bang for their buck. They've done it so far. The front office for me has done a fantastic job. It's just really continuing the trend and adding even more scoring ability and depth to a team that has loads of it. Now, I did kind of have a thought about, you know, how do the fans feel about the season? And so I thought it'd be fun next episode to kind of focus on that and talk about, you know, what, what are fans feeling about the coaching staff? What is their assessment of the front office's performance? And, you know, do they feel that there's a couple of guys who might be on the trading block? We'll talk about some of your fan responses on tomorrow's episode. But for tonight's show, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. Again, I encourage you, if you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Uh, of course, we're also on YouTube, but if you're well, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you're listening on any of your favorite uh, podcasting platforms, appreciate that as well. But like I said, that's all the time that we have. As always, have a great night, and go Jets, go.